Would you believe me if I told you that the plain text note taking app that you're already using has the potential to become the most powerful writing environment you've ever experienced? The truth is most people think of Obsidian simply as a notes app, but it's actually pretty incredible for just about every part of the writing process. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can transform this plain text note taking app into a writing powerhouse that rivals Scrivener, Google Docs, Ulysses, IA Writer, and just about every other premium writing app that you can think of. Whether you're a blogger who wants a streamlined way to publish to your website, a novelist working on organizing your thoughts for your next book, or simply someone who wants to create a regular writing habit to help make sense of things, Obsidian is the perfect partner for helping you get your words out into the world. And in this video, I'm gonna share a few of my favorite community plugins that can help you transform Obsidian from a simple text editor into the ultimate writing app. Before we get to the plugins though, there are a couple of important settings you'll wanna configure regardless of what plugins you decide to use. To access these, you need to go into the settings and click the editor section. First, you need to make sure that the default editing mode is set to live preview, and that will render the markdown formatting for you as you type, so it's easier to read. But it will also allow you to still see the actual code when you select it in the editor window. This is the best option I feel for writing in Obsidian as you have full access to the markdown code if you need it, but it also provides a much cleaner writing environment than a lot of other plain text editors that display the inline markdown code all the time. Next, make sure that auto pair markdown syntax is toggled on. This creates both the opening and closing markdown symbols at the same time when you're writing. So for example, to make text bold with markdown formatting, you simply type two asterisk characters and then the text in the middle. With this setting enabled, it will actually create four asterisks and place the cursor right in the middle so you can quickly type the text you want to make bold. By the way, if you're new to Markdown, I do have a Markdown reference document which shows all of the available Markdown text formatting options that you can use while you're writing in Obsidian. It's available for free in my Obsidian Starter Vault. More on that at the end of this video. Next, make sure that Smart Lists is toggled on. This makes it easier to create bulleted and numbered lists quickly by automatically adding the next bullet whenever you are on a line with a bullet and you hit the return key. In the case of ordered lists, the next bullet will auto increment to the next number in the series. So for example, if you're on bullet number one and you hit enter with this option toggled on, Obsidian will automatically create bullet number two right below it. You'll also want to make sure that fold heading and fold indent are both toggled on. These options create carrots for markdown headers as well as indented text that you can use to hide sections of text in your note, making Obsidian function more like an outliner and enabling you to fold sections of your text so that they're not visible in the editor window so you can focus on the text that you are currently writing. Now, in addition to these settings, you'll also want to enable a couple of core plugins. First, I recommend that you turn on the Footnotes View plugin. This plugin was added recently in version 1.9 alongside the Bases core plugin, which stole most of the attention. But this is actually a very good core plugin that eliminates the need for a community plugin that I used to run just to make adding footnotes easier. With this core plugin enabled, you can actually view your footnotes in a new sidebar tab that helps you manage footnotes for the current file without losing your place in the note. Next, make sure that you have the outline core plugin enabled. This adds an outline view in the sidebar with a hierarchical ordering of all your headers. This makes navigating longer notes much easier and helps you keep from losing your place in your note. You can also click the header to jump to that point in your note and you can even click and drag the headers in the sidebar to rearrange the different sections in the note itself. Lastly, you'll wanna make sure that the word count plugin is toggled on. This plugin shows the word and character count in the status bar and has gotten a lot better in recent history, again, removing the need for a separate community plugin for me by adding the ability to select text in your note and show the active word and character count for that selected text. All right, so now that we've got the settings and the core plugins out of the way, let's get into the community plugins, the fun stuff, and let's look at how we can turn Obsidian into the ultimate writing app. Now, unlike my last video, these plugins are in no particular order. There's a good chance that some of these may benefit you, but others may not. So feel free to look at all these plugins and add just the ones that you think will actually benefit your creative writing workflows. All the links to all the plugins mentioned here are in the description below this video. The first plugin I wanna recommend here is the Reading Time plugin. Now, as mentioned earlier, the Word Count Core plugin has been updated to show word and character counts, not just for the document, but also for selected text. That's great. 
but it can also be helpful to know about how long something will take to read, and that's where the reading time plugin comes in. This simple plugin adds an estimated reading time for the selected note to the status bar. This may not be useful for everyone, but I like this plugin when writing video scripts like this one for my YouTube videos because it gives me an estimate of how long a video will be when I'm done with it. The next plugin on the list is the typewriter mode plugin. This plugin consolidates a couple of other essential plugins into one. First, it adds a typewriter scrolling mode that keeps the current line at a fixed position on the screen. You could choose whether you want to highlight the current line, and you can also choose a number of lines to display above or below that active line. The second thing this plugin does is it adds a mode to help you focus on the words that you're writing. You can dim unfocused paragraphs or sentences, and you can also launch a full screen focus mode that hides the sidebars altogether and eliminates all visual clutter from on screen so you can focus on your words. This plugin is great for when you need to eliminate the distractions and just focus on the writing itself. The next plugin is one that has a little bit of a weird name, and that is Ghosty Posty. This year, I made the switch from WordPress to Ghost as my publishing platform, and while there are a couple of plugins that allow you to publish to your Ghost-powered website, Ghosty Posty by Matt Birchler is, in my opinion, the best one of the bunch for a couple of reasons. I love this plugin because it supports all of the standard Ghost features like tags, featured posts, and even different visibility levels. Plus, it can automatically upload images that are included in your post to your Ghost website. The only downside is that it's not in the community plugins directory, so you do have to install it via the Brat community plugin, which can be a little bit tricky. The next plugin is the Kanban plugin. This plugin lets you turn any markdown note into a Kanban board. And since you can link other notes in your card titles, the Kanban plugin is a great way to manage your active writing projects. With the note titles linked, you can simply command click on the note to open it in a new tab and simply start writing. These columns that the Kanban plugin gives you make it easy to see your project statuses and you can visually see your projects move from left to right as you make progress on them. I've got a whole system I built for this inside of Life HQ, my epic done for you Obsidian Vault. But if you wanna see how I put all of that together, then check out this YouTube video here where I walk through the whole thing. Now, even if you don't go that far with it though, this is a great plugin for tracking progress on your writing projects. The next plugin is the Language Tool plugin. Now this plugin is on the list simply because Grammarly isn't. I use Grammarly all the time. Unfortunately, using Grammarly inside of Obsidian is not great. This is the worst. I actually wish Obsidian had an official Grammarly plugin, but that's impossible since they discontinued their SDK. Since there is no Grammarly plugin, the next best thing is the Language Tool plugin, which gives you a built-in native spelling and grammar checker. Now note here that the Language Tool plugin is actually a fork of the Language Tool integration plugin that is currently in maintenance mode. So this one, the active one, has fewer downloads but does have some additional features and fixes. I don't think this plugin is quite as good as Grammarly, but it is much better than copying and pasting the text into a browser window somewhere. Now just be aware that if you're using City 1.9, you may have issues with text replacement via the tooltip feature. People have complained about this in the GitHub page for this plugin. And if you're looking for something that is completely offline, then the Harper plugin is also a good option. The next plugin is the Soundscapes plugin, and this one technically is not a writing plugin at all, but it is one that I use frequently when writing. This plugin adds a minimal music player to the status bar at the bottom of the Obsidian window where you can play lo-fi beats, nature sounds, ambient noise, and much more to help you focus. This plugin works by letting you choose between different YouTube playlists, but the end result is a built-in audio player that can provide focus music to help you crank out the words during your next focused writing session. What I like about this plugin is that there's plenty of options here for music without words, which are important for focused writing in my opinion. And since all my writing happens inside of Obsidian, it's nice to be able to toggle this on or off right from the status bar. The next plugin is the Keep the Rhythm plugin. I've mentioned this one a lot recently. I even did a whole video on this one, but with good reason. It's one of the best plugins for writers that I have ever come across. In fact, this just might be my new favorite plugin. 
It works by giving you writing stats and a heat map to visualize your writing progress, helping you to build writing momentum by inspiring you to show up and write every day. The heat map helps you see your writing progress over time and it creates motivation to show up and not break the chain. So if you need some help doing the actual writing, then this plugin is for you. Next is the Sentence Rhythm plugin. This one helps you maintain an interesting rhythm to your writing. When all your sentences sound roughly the same, they're all about the same length, it can become very boring very quickly for the reader. So one of the best things you can do as a writer to keep your writing interesting is to vary your sentence length. For example, this one is short. See what I mean? This plugin helps you avoid monotonous sounding writing by using different colors to highlight different sentence lengths, helping you create a rhythm that makes your writing avoid sounding bland and boring. If you are writing with the intention of publishing your words somewhere, this plugin can help you make it easier and more interesting to read. The next plugin is a bookend to the Sentence Rhythm plugin and it's one called Readability Score. Again, it helps make sure that your writing is easy to read. This one's important for me because I have a bad habit of using big words when I write. And with the Readability Score plugin, I can check the readability of the current note using the Flesh Reading Ease or FRE scale, which gives you your score in the status bar. Now in general, a score between 100 and 90 is really ideal for the type of writing that I do. That indicates roughly a fifth grade reading level. But as you can see, I tend to skew a bit higher than that. It's been said that Reader's Digest has a score of around 65, so that's generally what I shoot for. And being able to see my score can help me course correct when I get a little too nerdy or academic with my writing. Now the last plugin on this list is the Writing Goals plugin. This one is not for everybody, but it's really powerful. And it allows you to add Ulysses style writing goals to your notes or folders in Obsidian. Just right click on the note or folder in the file explorer and then select add writing goal from the contextual menu. Now once you set your goal, a word goal property gets added to your note and you can view your progress either in the circle to the right of the note title or in the right sidebar. Once you hit your writing goal, the color of the progress circle changes to green to show that you've met your goal. And this is really useful if you're working on a bigger writing project. If you're working on something like a book project, you'll probably want something like the Writing Goals plugin so you can set a goal for the folder and create individual notes for the different chapters and have all of your writing progress be rolled up and displayed visually in either the File Explorer or that right sidebar. The one thing that bugs me about this plugin is that the theming is a little bit weird. You can configure the colors in the settings, but I do wish that it had built-in support for both light and dark mode. So there you have it, all the settings, core plugins, and recommended community plugins to help you turn Obsidian into the ultimate writing app. Now I use all of these plugins myself, though I don't use them all the time. Some I leave on permanently, but others I turn on or off as needed. Now I've provided links to all the plugins mentioned in this video in the description below. So if any of these look intriguing, then you can download them for yourself and you can give them a shot. And if you want more help dialing in your Obsidian Vault, then check out my free Practical PKM Obsidian Starter Vault. It has a collection of tips and resources that are all broken down by category from basic PKM concepts to essential core features to time-saving keyboard hotkeys. There are also a collection of my own personal template files, as well as a markdown cheat sheet, as I mentioned earlier, a couple of shortcuts, and even a habit tracking dashboard canvas file, along with instructions on how to set it all up. If you could use a little help getting more out of your notes and ideas in Obsidian, you should definitely check this out. You can go download it for free right now if you go to vault.practicalpkm.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in another video.